Heads up, there are some content warnings for this episode. Please read the episode description and use your discretion when deciding to listen. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I feel like I talk about my struggles with anxiety a lot on here. Um, Well, BetterHelp can assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-O-A-F-N, that's Better H-E-L-P, and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Once in Future Nerd listeners can get 10% off their first month by using our link. Again, that's Better H-E-L-P.com slash T-O-A-F-N. We'd like to thank all of our patrons, including Sarah G, Duncan RG, and Oren, for your tremendous support. You make this show possible, and we can't thank you enough. For those of you who don't know, you can join at patreon.com slash onceinfuturenerd, where you can enjoy great perks, such as digital or physical copies of our unique chapter art, or the chance to call in live to ask a question on our end-of-chapter livestream Q&A episodes. Speaking of livestream Q&A episodes, it's that time again. We're still hammering out the exact date, but it will occur in the month of May. Please keep an eye out on our socials and we'll announce the date shortly. In the meantime, any and all listeners are welcome to submit questions for the Q&A session, be they about the chapter you just heard, about speculating on the favorite music genres of each character, or whatever crosses your mind. If you have a question, please use hashtag AskToAFN on any of our social media. All listeners can submit a question, but patron questions receive top priority. So please submit your questions, hashtag AskToAFN, and we hope to see you for the live stream. Again, exact time TBD. Finally, just some housekeeping. In the month of May, you will not be hearing a main plot episode, but in exchange, you will hear two pieces of TOAFN content. The first is the aforementioned Ask TOAFN Q&A, and the second is another minisode release. We hope you enjoy them. And if you don't, fear not. Book 2 Chapter 8 will be resuming in June. That's right, no long pauses, jumping right into Book 2 Chapter 8. All right, that's it for announcements. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the finale to Chapter 7. Once and Future Nerd Book 2 Myth Made Flesh Chapter 7 What's Close to You Part 4 by Christian T. Kelly Madeira and Gregory M. Schultz So What was this dream you had? Well, first of all, I remembered it, so that's weird. Uh, I don't know the last time I remembered a dream. I see. And, uh, so there was this... There was the little girl and the monster, right? Mm -hmm. And the girl said her enemy was near, and we haven't been asking the right questions, and we're out of time. And not to let my power be corrupted. And then the monster grabbed my head and I woke up. I see. Yeah, but then later, the baby grabbed my hand in real life. And it, and it, it, was, it was the, uh, it was the same. The same? I don't know how to describe it. I just knew it was the same, even though it wasn't. I think I know what you mean. Sometimes in dreams I'll find myself in a room that looks nothing like my parents' cottage. And yet it feels like my parents' cottage so much that I'm certain that's where I am. Is it like that? Yeah. Kinda. Except in reverse. In in the dream, I, I didn't know what I was feeling when the monster grabbed me. But as soon as the baby did too? Then I recognized that feeling. Was it frightening? Or painful? No. That's what was weird. It was, uh... It's kind of chill. Chill? Like I finally understood something I was supposed to but couldn't before, except I don't remember what it was that I understood. 
Ah, yes. A true scholar's most frustrating recurring dream. Yeah, and then he wanted me to look at this book. In the dream? No, IRL. Um... In... in real life. Nia took the book in her hands. The very one she had specifically directed Jen and Nelson towards. On the totemic traditions of primitive Jordan, as you may recall. You... Sure, it was this one he chose? Totally. Uh, what do you think it means? Nia, you were telling us about avatars once and then shit popped off and we never finished the conversation. Does this have something to do with that? What did you mean when you said that I might be more than human? Well, as I said, the theory of divine avatars is considered heretical if espoused in earnest. As such, reliable sources on the matter are sparse. Even the very book you handed me. There were times I would have traded an arm to spend one night reading it had the offer been made. You're gonna tell me you need to read the whole thing before you can say more. I very badly want to read it. But fortunately, or not, depending on how you look at it, we have a more expedient option. I'd rather not spend our last minutes together getting into another of your debates. Can't we just pass the time in peace? I think you were right. About what? Nelson? Show her. Here you go. This is, uh... uh Mildred's fine, dear. What's this? On the totemic traditions of primitive Yordi. It's a very old book. I haven't read it, but it is known to be the best surviving source on the theory of divine avatars. Demigods, you mean? Yes. I've come to believe they were real. The Order of the Plough had it right all along. I see. What changed your mind? My travels since leaving the college. Hmm. Did they now? We need to borrow from your knowledge on the subject. Borrow away. Every time avatars are supposed to have walked among us, they battled each other. Yes? Aye, of course. Galadin rallies the forces of order, and his enemy rallies the forces of chaos, and the two outs do battle. How recently is that believed to have happened? Oh, not for a long time. Long before anyone living was born. And how would we have known? They tell us, of course. Announce themselves, claim their dominion, how else to rally their forces? Well, perhaps by convincing their forces that they were acting of their own accord. What are you driving at? This may sound mad, but suppose an avatar of Geridian had walked Jordan during our lifetimes. No, that's... Surely we'd have known. Don't call her Shirley. Sorry. Wrong crowd for that one. The murder of Prince Uther Guernatal has been unsolved for nearly 17 years, which suggests us tremendously, almost supernaturally skilled assassin. And can you remember any single event in your lifetime which further advanced the cause of chaos? Have you not felt as if Jordan has been slowly unraveling ever since? Aye, oh, perhaps, but that doesn't mean it was a god, what did it? The seven of us have been having dreams, which I have come to believe are Selberic in nature. You know I would not take that position lightly. In one of them, I was told the blind man has seen the face of God, and the very next day, a blind beggar told me he watched Geridian kill the prince. Nia saw a wave of unease pass over her mother's face. What is it? There's talk in the scrolls of what happens when avatars are killed. They always mention a blinding light. And there was a blinding light right before we came here. I see. All present, let this new information sink in for a moment. But wait, that's just it. Avatars have been killed plenty of times before. And the stories don't say Jordan plunged into chaos. Or, order for that matter, their spirits return to Selberin, where they regain their godly powers, which include inhabiting another avatar if they wish, and the cycle just begins anew. 
Hmm. Interesting. Oh. My killer has died as well, but has not joined me. My killer has died as well, but has not joined me. That's what Brennan heard in his first dream. Right? Correct. So... What if Geridian killed Galadin's avatar, but found some way to stop the spirit from going back to Selbrin? Where would they go? Uh, uh what about uh, another dimension or, or, or plane of existence or something? Selbrin and Jordan are the only known planes of existence. There is no recorded evidence of any others. Nia, where I came from, do you think that's Selbrin or, or, or Jordan? I... Don't know. What if there's a whole other plane? And Gridian figured out how to send Gallad in there. I suppose it's not impossible, but we're so far out on this limb now that I don't know if it's likely. You thought I might be more than human somehow, right? But we ruled out avatars because avatars know they're avatars. That much the scrolls make clear. And what if they were so far from Selberin that they lost track? Like, they lost touch with the part of themselves that was a god. And it wasn't until they got back closer to Selberin that they start to remember. What do you mean, started to remember? Uh, Brandon started having dreams when he showed up at the castle. You started having dreams that night at, at Bailey's. We all had the same dream when we were together at Freehold, and now I started remembering my dreams when I was babysitting, which means the baby must be a... Sorry, are you trying to say that you and that babe are avatars of the gods? Believe me, I don't want it to be true. I I'm just saying what makes sense. Nia could see the distant, glassy look in Nelson's eyes and recognized it for the terror that it was. Nelson, it's true that this hypothesis could explain some of the stranger phenomena of your time here, but that doesn't mean it is the only or even the most likely explanation. <laughs> yeah, but I... Doesn't something about it feel right? Well, I would... Hey! Sorry, am I interrupting something? I need to borrow Nia a minute, but it can wait. I'm happy to stay a while. There's more to talk about. No, I am... Um, I, I gotta digest a little. Everything okay? Where are we off to? Regan's exact words. You know how people say they humbly request your presence when they really mean get your ass in here right the fuck now? Well, I actually humbly request your presence. Nia looked to her mother, and an unspoken moment of kinship passed between the women. <laughs> I'll try not to keel over in shock. Hey. Your Grace? Yo. I'm sorry. You were right. About basically everything. Jen and Nia looked at each other and then back at Regan, almost uncertain of how to proceed. Thanks. That really does mean a lot coming from you. But is there any chance you could be more specific? I made a call that wasn't mine to make, because I thought I knew better. And it was the wrong call. It was stupid. And it makes me a hypocrite. Nia, I'm sorry I gave you shit about saving your parents. I'm glad they're safe. I thought I was protecting the group, but really I was covering my ass. I appreciate that very much. Jen, I'm really sorry you got hurt. I'm just... Not used to anyone having my back, I guess. I'm grateful for what you did. But I want you to promise never to risk yourself for me again, okay? What? 
No, I'm not going to promise that. But that's what I want. What about what I want? I've got your back, so get used to it. Jen, I can't do it again. Do what again? You're the good one. Just like Katie, I can't outlive the good one again. I think it'll kill me this time. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, you were both the good one. Kids aren't supposed to die ever. Whatever you think you did that made you bad, I'm sure you were just doing your best to keep your sister alive. And besides, I'm grown. I'm as fucked up as anyone. (laughs) You're not fucked up. One time, me and Billy ordered Domino's, right? And they brought us an extra cheesy bread by mistake. Uh... Oh, um, cheesy bread is exactly what it sounds like, but with just an obscene amount of garlic butter. And we didn't realize until like ten minutes after the delivery guy left. We could have called him back, but I didn't, because if we waited for him to come back, then we wouldn't have time to hook up before my mom got home. So that's bad enough, but then I forgot about the cheesy bread. Just left it on the counter. Billy went home, I went to bed. I woke up like midnight, really hungry, and I walked downstairs and just housed that cheesy bread. The whole thing. It had been sitting out for like five hours. Who does that? Nia? Uh-huh. I want it on record that I think she'd be out of her fucking head to risk herself for me. But I guess I can't really stop her. So, we okay? Don't fucking do that again, okay? <sighs> Can I give you a hug? Uh, I guess, yeah. Watch the arm. <sighs> I'm really glad you're okay. Yeah, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Nia, we good? I accept your apology. I still feel angry, if I'm being honest. But soon enough, I think I won't. Fair enough. So, collateral. Go and tell Ren she can have Maggie and Katie. (gasps) Your swords? Are you sure about that? I sure as shit can't use them right now. Tell her they're master crafted, and they never made a cut that didn't kill. Which reminds me, Jen, your little library trip. Yeah, I guess that was kind of selfish, too. See? I am fucked up, I told you. It was selfish, and stupid. In your defense, you've learned from the best. But you three might have saved all our asses by nabbing that statue. Now listen very carefully. When we meet up with these smugglers, our story is we got a friend over there who's holding on to our money. You don't let any of them find out you're holding onto that thing till we're safely over. And even then, be very, very careful. You get me? People get killed on highways and left in a ditch for far, far, far less. Yeah, right, cool. No pressure. It's nearly daylight. We should make our final arrangements. And with that, Nia and Jen nodded to their queen and friend and departed her family. Land home on the land home. You foreigner get an off. We're not dropping anchor for long, so you'll want to be bidding your farewells now. Mum? Dad? I'm going to miss you so much. <laughs> oh, sweet girl. <laughs> when do you fake you'll be back? Just as soon as I can. You stay safe now. You hear me? Over mine own spirit, I shall keep ceaseless vigil. And you as well. If you should run into any trouble, seek out the lady... The maid, Anna, as it were. She is quite skilled at winning over a crowd. Right. I imagine we'll stay close, seeing as we know each other. And if I may ask one more thing of you. I know that what I've said about the Orkish peoples is hard to believe. 
but please do try it. It's known that many of them work the farms out on the ice. Just look for their humanity wherever you can find it. I can't expect you to take the same risks as I, but I hope one day you'll understand. We think he should be called Connor. Ah, a name from the old times, then. Had a brother named Connor. Everyone was so happy when I went off to work at His Majesty's Keep. I was too, of course. Met my brothers and sisters could eat, but... I was still leaving. Connor was the only one who cried for me. I heard a fever took him a few years back. Poor thing. Arlene placed a comforting hand on Gwen's shoulder. Connor it is. Now you remember what you promised, yeah? We'll take good care of him. Pinky swear. And take this. It seems to help when he starts crying. Arlene handed Brennan the music box, which she had acquired in Maeve Bailey's establishment what felt like a lifetime ago. And if that fails, I captured a lullaby on the device Jen showed us. At least, I tried to. Thank you, my lady. I'd like you both to have these. With as much grace and decorum as his surroundings would allow, Brennan knelt before the two women and presented them with four of his throwing axes. Oh, thank you, Sir Brennan. How sweet. It's not exactly what they're made for, but if you find any ropes need cutting or trees need felling, they'll see it through. <clears throat> also, if anyone gives you trouble, whack them with the blunt end. And if they keep giving you trouble, then whack them with the sharp end until they stop. Of course. Well, here's hoping it needn't come to that. If I may, Sir Brennan, growing up where I did, you tend to see the worst sides of nights. You start to think that all those songs about virtue and heroes are just songs. But you're the real thing, Brennan. Everything a knight's supposed to be. Brennan looked down at the deck of the ship, but the red rising to his cheeks was unmistakable. And if any of those other sell swords and rapists who call themselves knights dare look down on you for your birth, you tell those pissants... They may be of noble blood, but you're of noble soul. Damn right. Hey, maybe the great bard Anna can put you in one of her songs someday. All the sugarcane isles will know of your great deeds. Now it was Anna's, nay Arlene's, turn to blush. Oh, I don't think I could actually write a song of my own. Brennan... Do please thank Her Majesty for her tremendous hospitality these last few weeks. We truly owe her our lives. I only wish we had more to offer by way of gratitude. The Queen is strong and wise and just. May her days be long. Thank you, my lady. I'm sure your kind words are... Oh, fuck me! Gwen! I mean, Gail! Sorry, I just can't believe I forgot about this. All this time... Gail, nay Gwen, pulled her hand out of a small purse on her belt to reveal a luminescent golden vial. If you've forgotten that Gwen found the vial on the floor of the horse's head inn after Jen left it behind during a Templar ambush, well, you'd be forgiven, seeing as how Gwen herself had only just remembered. Would have been useful for now, Gwen, you dunce. Pardon me, but that's my paramour you're talking about, and I'll not hear you disparage her so. Yes? At this, Brennan's jaw went slack. Your... She's... What? Cal... I mean, Yellowine? My lady. Do you know what this is? Elf medicine? Let me see. It says this treats fever and pain related to inflammation. If only I had had this when my arm wound had gone bad. I... Sorry. No matter, it's still well timed. I'll bring this to Her Majesty at once. Thank you. And farewell to both of you. I wish you the best. As Alf rode Arlene, Gwen, Mildred, and Ben towards the tropical island before them, the newly formed foursome looked for a moment at their new home to be. Then they turned their attention back to the Red Reaver and their kith and kin waving farewell. They returned the waves and held this gaze for a long while. 
And then when the brigantine was no longer visible on the horizon, did the four finally turn to look at each other? The Once and Future Nerd is directed by Christian T. Kelly Madeira. It is created and executive produced by Zach Glass and Christian T. Kelly Madeira, and co-executive produced by Jess Kelly Madeira. The associate producer is Alec Story. It is performed by... Rhiannon Angel. Garrett Arman. Dan Dobransky. Anya Gibeon. Ian Harkins. Shannon Harris. Aaron Lanham. Paul Notice. April Ortiz. Juliet Prather. Frank Quares. Julie Reed. Regina Renee Russell. Gregory M. Schultz. Editing for this episode is by David Devereaux. Foley sound design and post-production mixing by Matthew Boudreau. Tom Lee is our musical director and lead composer, with additional scoring by Chris Montalbo. For more, visit onceandfuturenerd.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr or Reddit. 